Three times before in my career, I've seen gold strong in conjunction with a strong U.S. dollar. And that has been um, the condition precedent for a very, very, very strong gold market. You'll notice that gold is doing spectacularly well in other currencies other than the U.S. dollar, given very strong U.S. dollar strength. And the fact that gold is doing well in U.S. dollar terms uh, suggests that we are in the early stages of a real rebound in gold. In my experience, too, geopolitical concerns can move gold in the near term, but those those gains are given up. What has moved gold uh, in my lifetime has been investors and savers' concern about the purchasing power of conventionally denominated instruments. One thing that you can say about $130 oil and a war economy uh, is that it will be paid for uh, by quantitative easing. It will be paid for by debt and deficits. It will be paid for with negative real interest rates. Those three things, quantitative easing, Michelle, if you did that, it would be called counterfeiting, mm -hmm. uh, increased debt and deficits, uh, and continued negative real interest rates uh, are a very potent one, two, three combination to make people concerned about the purchasing power of their savings in other instruments. And that's tailor-made for gold. So I think the current circumstance is good for the gold price in the intermediate term, perhaps not the near term, because the way we pay for this economic difficulty will, in every sense, in every way, be good for gold. All right. So define two terms for me here. Good for gold and intermediate. Intermediate. That means give me a price and a timeline. Uh, I suspect that gold will be uh, up marginally to flat three to four months. I think some Russian gold will find its way in the market because I think the Russians need for cash is bigger than many people think. I think too, personally, that a way will be found out uh, of this hostile stalemate in the Ukraine. At least I hope so. I think so, and I hope so. But my upside target as we begin to pay uh, on a global basis for what we're doing right now, uh, I mean, I, I don't have a number for you, but when people tell me, Rick, are you thinking about uh, 2200 or 2500? No, I'm thinking that the digit to the left doesn't have a two in front of it. Uh, I think it has a bigger number in front of it. I've been through, uh, Michelle, two prior real gold bull markets in my life. And people normally underestimate the dimension of a move in the gold price. My first gold bull market, the price went from $35 to what, 850? My second one, it went from 250 to 1900. I'm not saying that gold is going to go up sevenfold from here, but I don't think a double or a triple over the five year time frame is out of line at all. So you do think that it's quite likely that gold doubles or triples within the next five years? I do. Gold doubling or tripling within the next five years. Or, uh, or, or let's put it differently. Let's say that the purchasing power of the U.S. dollar denominated in gold falls by half. That might be easier for people to stomach. And of course, uh, that brings us back to dollar debasement and inflation and the Fed and this unprecedented fiscal monetary stimulus quantitative easing or uh, counterfeiting, if I did it, as you say. Uh, and let's bring it back to, to the U.S. economy and the Fed, because we have oil jumping, the yield curve narrowing, stocks falling into correction, signs are pointing to a recession or stagflation, given we have such inflation. What's your economic outlook for the U.S.? Uh, I, I, I hate to be hedged. It's mixed. There is so much cash on the sidelines. Uh, so much cash on the sidelines that the immediate impact in investment markets doesn't need to be large. There's a lot of money that's uh, looking to be employed. And the lessons that we have learned over the past 40 years uh, have, me have, have meant that many people have been schooled to buy the dips. Before we continue, help us clicking that YouTube like button and subscribe now to our channel. This shows the algorithm that you valued this information. And it helps us spread that message. Sharing is caring. And now, let's continue. Uh, so my suspicion in the near term, at least in financial markets, is that the response is going to be uh, fairly muted, simply because there's so much cash on the sidelines. But I think that disguises uh, larger challenges. The first challenge is very simple. The last 40 years that we've lived through, Michelle, <laughs> that I've lived through, maybe not you, uh, that an older person has lived through, uh, have been the most benign economic climate 
in the history of the world. We've benefited from so many tailwinds, the productivity of the baby boomers coming into an end, we're dying. Uh, the impact particularly of lower interest rates, how do you lower them below zero? The impact that we've enjoyed from globalization, the world is becoming more nationalistic. Uh, there are a whole bunch of tailwinds that we've enjoyed over the last 40 years. And I'm not saying that the next 40 years are going to be catastrophic. I'm just saying they're going to be less benign than the last 40. Uh, people have said to me, when are voters, uh, when are investors, when are consumers going to take note of inflation? They've noted inflation, but it hasn't bit them yet. And they've been schooled not to worry too much about inflation because they've been through 40 benign years. I suspect over two years of higher gasoline prices, higher taxes, higher rents, higher home prices, higher grocery prices, when people realize that a 3% wage increase is a 6% decline in their standard of living, that people will again take inflation into account, much as they did in the decade of the 70s. So I suspect, I suspect that what we're seeing is a delayed reaction to a set of circumstances that people understand but aren't taking seriously yet. And I think right. they're going to. And uh, that inflation is going to translate itself into high demand for gold. Is that your thesis that we're going to see gold double or triple in the next five years? Not because of World War Three, because if I understand you correctly, you do see an off ramp to this current conflict. You do think some kind of diplomatic solution will be found, but that the bigger issue is inflation and dollar debasement. And that's what's going to take gold to double or triple where it is right now in the next five years? Briefly, five things to know about gold. Quantitative easing is counterfeiting. You debase a currency by making more of it out of proportion to the growth in the economy, which we're doing. Debt and deficits, uh, our, our federal debt, including uh, off balance sheet liabilities, entitlements, is unserviceable, particularly with a budget that's $3 trillion a year in deficit. It can't be done. The most pernicious, of course, is negative real interest rates. If you look at the arithmetic, as we did in the last interview around the U.S. 10-year Treasury, they pay you 2% in a currency that's depreciating by 6 or 7% a year. Jim Grant calls this return-free risk. If ever there was a circumstance that would call into question the uh, diminution of purchasing power in conventional savings and investment assets, it's the absolute guarantee of the U.S. government that they promise to make you poorer. The fourth, of course, is the fact that with negative real interest rates, the largest institutional investors in the world, people who characteristically carry 40% of their investment portfolio in bonds, have to begin to disintermediate from bonds because the bonds guarantee that they won't be able to make their pension obligations. Some of the money that goes out of bonds, I suspect, will go into an instrument that has uh, almost a millennium long track record of protecting people from uh, the depredations of the currency, which is to say gold. Finally, the market capitalization of precious metals and precious metals related equities in the US is reported to be one half of 1%. The three decade mean is one and a half percent. If quantitative easing, negative real interest rates, debt and deficits, disintermediation uh, only cause demand for precious metals and precious metals related assets to return to mean, that demand would triple. Do you want to know one thing about crypto? I made over 3000% in profit in a few weeks. Fact is, the traditional financial system, the traditional money system makes you poor, not rich. If you want to earn 500,000, 1 million dollar, you have to wait until you're 50, 60, 70 in the traditional financial system and you probably will still be broke and you will be old. This is not a sexy combination as you can imagine. But the question is, how can you start in crypto and make these profits? Where to invest? Where to start? My name is Gunnar and I'm from Germany as you can hear and things are a little bit different in Germany. More about that later on. The fact is, there are lots of different cryptocurrencies. It's a gigantic universe where beginners and professionals get easily lost. But there is light at the end of the tunnel. There are seven key steps you need to follow to become successful in this market. You have to know them and if you fail one of them, it's literally impossible to succeed in this market. Just an example, one of the key points is your exchange and one of the biggest are for example Binance and Coinbase. These are trusted and well established exchanges but, and this is a big but, you won't find the super profitable coins on those exchanges. The unknown super profitable coins that get gigantic profits 
are not traded on those kind of exchanges. They are traded on much smaller insider platforms that are barely known. And I can tell you what those super secret exchanges are and why they are so profitable. And another super important thing are the right information sources. The point is, the internet is gigantic. There are hundreds and hundreds of YouTube channels, blogs, pages and much, much more. And there are also market makers and influencers. For example, Elon Musk, he is not a crypto guy. But the moment he recommended Dogecoin, it went through the roof, to the moon, so to say. But why did he recommend it? Where did he hear it from? He didn't hear it from newspapers. And believe me, he is listening to someone. But you have to know who and you have to react before he is reacting. This is really, really important. And these are only two of the seven steps you have to follow in order to be successful in crypto. And if you want to know all of these steps in much more detail, and if you want to have a comprehensive checklist, here's what you should do. There is a link below this video. Click on this link and you will get the opportunity to subscribe to my channel. Click on the link and you will see a video where I explain the next steps. So see you soon. Click on the link now. I'll see you there.